hello hello welcome back to another video and today it's going to be what i am hoping will be my last big haul ever <laughs> so i since starting book cheap have got a little bit excited and i have bought a lot of books in the last 12 to 18 months and so i will be implementing a system a system going forward to help me ensure that I have less books coming in than going out because once I've read a book I donate it I don't keep books with a few very small exceptions and so yeah if you want to know about my new system stay tuned to the end but for now let's talk about all the books <laughs> there's a lot of books that I have bought recently so I have sorted them into rough piles of sort of where I bought them from rather than genres this time uh so bear with me we're in a bit of a we're in a bit of a pickle here so <laughs> the first book i'd like to talk about is black beauty by anna Sewell. uh so this is a very famous classic children's book and it i think follows sort of the life of this horse black beauty uh i saw shelley ever shelley Sperringen review this last year earlier this year at some point and it sounded really, really good. So given that it's a classic children's book that I've never read, I decided to pick it up. So I bought this on a whim on Amazon on uh, what, a payday, I think maybe August payday, just randomly because I wanted it. Also in my basket that day, I put Cassandra by Crystal Wolf. This is a translated book. It's translated from German by Jan van Heerk. And this is the story of Cassandra from Greek mythology. So Cassandra was um, the daughter of Prius, the who was the sort of the top bloke in Troy, <laughs> and <clears throat> she is able to sort of see the future. Uh, but there are caveats to that. I won't go into it if you don't know the myth. But I really, really like Cassandra's story and haven't seen it done from her perspective before. And I've seen it done not very well before so I really want to read a good one and I've heard really good things about this one so I picked up this and then I also picked up another children's book though it is a bloody chunky one and that is Swallows and Amazons by Arthur Ransom again this is a classic children's story I don't know too much about it I think the boat is called the Swallow and I think they just gone on an adventure and a sort of piratey and stuff so yeah I would really like to get to this one at some point, but yeah, it's quite chunky for a children's book. Then on a random trip into town the other day, I popped into a secondhand bookstore and I picked up Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. And I think this is vaguely about like catfishing. <laughs> so yeah, sort of dating someone that you've never met online and are they a real person? That sort of governs. But yeah, I'd sort of seen it about last year and I thought it sounded interesting. So I picked it up. Then <laughs> me and my husband had a, f a child free day and uh, he was like, well, why don't we go into town and you can go to the bookshop on your own with no children and just browse to your heart's content. And I was like, hell yes, let's do that. <laughs> the trouble is when a bookish person is allowed free reign in water stones with no distractions and no time limits um this is what happens so let's, let's talk about these ones so the first one i picked up was the field by robert c thaler c thaler uh, and this author has been shortlisted for the booker international booker before it is translated again from the german by charlotte collins and this one is the, the field i think is a cemetery and then we hear about like village life from the dead people in the cemetery, I think is the general premise. I'll, I'll be honest, I picked it up because I had a field on the front and you know, I love agriculture. <laughs> so yeah, but then when I read the premise, I thought, oh, that, that sounds quite interesting and it's super pretty and it's translated. So tick, 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 it, it got purchased. Then I picked up Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is obviously translated from Russian by 
Natasha Randall. And I basically I picked this up because I've been wanting to try some classic Russian literature for a while. Uh, Dostoevsky in particular sort of is interesting to me and this one's super short so I thought this might be a nice introduction to his work and in this one we follow a man who is sort of I don't know trapped imprisoned living in a cellar in sort of the depths of St Petersburg and it's about sort of his nature and he's quite sadistic and yeah I think it's gonna be dark <laughs> I think it's gonna be dark uh, but at the back it says this disturbing character causes an uncomfortable flicker of recognition and we see in him our own human condition so that sounds that sounds riveting so i bought that one too then i picked up cannery row by john steinbeck uh i've read several books of john steinbeck's and i would like to work through sort of all of his works so i saw this one on the shelf and i decided to pick it up i don't know too much about this one I think this is also set in California, like quite a few of his novels. And I think we sort of just follow the lives of various people in a in a small town. And yeah, I will give it a go. Then I picked up The Employees, a workplace novel of the 22nd century by Olga Raven, which is translated from the Danish by Martin Aitken. So this is, this was, I think, longlisted or shortlisted? shortlisted for the 2021 International Booker Prize and very much piqued my interest at the time. And that is because this is a sci-fi novel. <laughs> this takes place aboard a spaceship and they, I think they find some weird objects on a planet and then it's the effect that that has on the different people on the ship. And yeah, I've heard really good things and as I said this is one that really interested me from that short list that I just never got around to so when I saw it in Waterstones I picked it up and I can't wait to get to this one. Then I picked up Go Tell It On The Mountain by James Baldwin. James Baldwin I still haven't tried, he is on my TBR for this month but we'll see if we get to him but I very much want to try quite a few of his works, he definitely sounds like an author for me and this one takes place in Harlem and we follow the son of a preacher who is sort of destined to walk in his father's footsteps but his father is not super nice uh, so he doesn't want to exactly follow in his father's footsteps so I think that's the general premise and yeah like I say just really really keen to try some some Baldwin. And the next two that I picked up from Walkstones were completely random I've never heard anyone talk about them uh, I was drawn in by the cover and then the premise sold it to me. So the first is Sotsi by Athol Fugard. And this is a book that takes place in South Africa and we follow a young gang member, gang leader, who sort of kidnaps a woman one day and she basically thrusts her child at him and he's left sort of with a child to look after and it's about how that changes his life and it sounded really interesting like I said I've never heard of this author before I've never heard of this book before but South African literature I am here for it I am very well I'm not very clued up on South African literature I think this author is actually South African yeah I'm not very clued up on South African literature and authors so this sounded like a good place to start and how gorgeous is that cover and staying in Africa but this time a Kenyan author we have The Dragonfly Sea by Yvonne Adiambo Owa apologies of of pronounced that incorrectly and this just sounds epic so in this one we follow a young girl who is sort of targeted by uh, religious fundamentalists and various other people uh, and she ends up moving from like a small island through Africa and I think to China where she is forced to grow up rather quickly and it just sounded really interesting I love the sort of I love stories that take you on a journey I read Black Mamba Boy quite recently and very very much enjoyed that and that was sort of very much a journey book and so yeah when I saw this I mean how can you avoid that cover and then when I read that on the back I was like yeah I, ha I have to have it I have to have it uh, and like I say Kenyan author so looking forward to getting a perspective from that part of the world so a bit of a random one now um, one that I picked up on Vinted <laughs> because why not 
So a lot of people have been discussing manga lately and I'm like, ah, I haven't read any manga. So I thought, I'd, I, I didn't want to spend a fortune on it in case I didn't like it. So I had a look on Vinted and I saw this for like £1.50 or £2 and I was like, let's give it a go. And that is Death Note, volume one? Volume one, I think. Oh, volumes one and two. <laughs> so I have absolutely no idea what this is about. I literally just wanted to try some manga and I know that Jem over at Bookish Gems has talked about this series before and enjoyed it and I very much trust her opinion. So I have it and I'm going to read it and um, yeah I think most people know but manga like opens the wrong way round and you like read it backwards but it's not actually backwards just like backwards to what we would normally read. So yeah and it's effectively like a big graphic novel. I don't know if that's true that's that's my perception of it <laughs> so yeah that one got added and then i went for a little trip i went for a little trip to the other side of london um and saw the lovely emily at novel novels charlie brick her sister and alice from alice and the giant bookshelf came up as well and we went shopping i went a bit mad not gonna lie I went a bit mad um before we but before we even got into town before we even went in a bookshop uh emily gave me three books <laughs> uh so thank you very much emily for these three and i will just quickly talk through them now the first one is tin man by sarah women i don't know a lot about this the blurb gives like nothing away two boys a girl walks into their lives everything changes um but people rave and rave about sarah women and this book in particular so <clears throat> When Emily had it, just going, just going free. I was like, yeah, I've got to, I've got to try that one. So yes, excited for this. And then she also gave me The Missing Sister by Dinah Jeffries. I haven't read any Dinah Jeffries. Again, an author that's on my list to give a go. And Emily said this one was quite good. It's set in 1930s Burma. And it's sort of a bit like mystery-esque. So I think um, the main character is like a singer or a dancer or something in a nightclub uh but there's something that she found in her parents possessions alluding to a secret from many years ago so yeah i am intrigued tickle me tickle me intrigued and then she also gave me ship of brides by jj moyes i really like jj moyes she is quite a comforting author to me even though some of her stuff is quite heartbreaking but just her writing style feels quite comforting and this is about something I know very little about and it's set in 1946 and it's to do with um, women who married soldiers during the war and then had to cross the ocean to be with them. So I think they went from Australia to England or maybe the other way around, I'm not really sure. I'll let you know when I've read the book. But yeah, so it's about this ship of, uh, I think it's like 650 women who are traveling the ocean to meet the men that they married. So. Yeah, it sounds quite good. It sounds quite good. I think this might be the sort of book that I would like to check on holiday, one that you can like just devour. I think so. So thank you very much, Emily, for those three. And then we went to some charity shops. So let's go through them, shall we? I picked up Murakami's The Wind Up Bird Chronicles. I have only read one other book by Murakami and that was 1Q84, which I didn't really like. But I've heard a lot of people say that they like Murakami but they didn't like that book so perhaps it was just the wrong one to start with. So this one has always intrigued me mainly because of the title because I actually have no idea what it's about. I think it's quite weird. I think most of Mur Murakami's work is quite weird but it was in the charity shop you can probably see it was a pound so I thought let's uh let's try this one. I also picked up The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. This is a children's book. I've seen it on quite a lot of like books you should read, lists. And I think this is just like a magical, whimsical children's tale uh, about uh, a boy who sort of travels across the toll booth into some magical land. Um, it sort of gives me vibes of C.S. Lewis and maybe a little bit of um, Lewis Carroll. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what to expect from this but Alice also has this book so we're going to buddy read it together next year and yeah it just I mean doesn't that cover just look delightful I think it does so I bought it 
And then I picked up this one, The Passenger by Ulrich Alexander Boschwitz. I have heard of this book before, but I don't know where, and this is another translated one. I'm really on a translated fiction kick at the moment. Um, also translated from German. Is that like three? I've had translated from German today by Philip Bowen. This is set in Berlin and we follow a German Jew in 1938. His synagogue is being burned down and it's about his, sort of his escape from Germany. So yeah, I really enjoy reading books about World War II and I don't think I've read anything from a German Jewish perspective before. So this will be quite interesting and obviously because it's written by a German author, it will uh, be quite interesting to see that perspective. And then I picked up Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. Never read any Sebastian Barry before, but have really wanted to. And this is about, I think, two teenagers who sort of sign up for the war in the 1850s. And they come across, uh, it says on the back, an Indian girl, a Native American girl, I assume. And sort of their life changes from there. I don't really want to know anymore going in. Uh, but yeah, it sounds sounds good and like I said Sebastian Barry I have heard good things about so I'm optimistic that I will like this one and then we move to Morocco with Tangerine and this sounds fascinating and again I've seen people talk about this a bit before but it's about a woman who moves to Tangier with her husband and she bumps into a friend that she'd fallen out with a year ago and I think it's sort of a bit of a toxic relationship between those two friends and yeah I don't really know too much more than that, but it's an interesting setting. I love um, sort of weird friendship dynamics and toxic friendship dynamics because it's me. Uh, the darker the better. <laughs> so yeah, I picked that one up. I think Emily also picked a copy of this up. This was in several charity shops. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Okay, so it seems I made a slight error. <laughs> I've literally just read the synopsis of this, uh, but I picked up The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Arundhati Roy. Um, this is the follow-up to The God of Small Things. <laughs> and I haven't read that, so I'll have to pick up The God of Small Things uh, before I get to this. But basically, I recognised the name and picked it up. So I can't really tell you much about this because as soon as I read that it was a follow-up, obviously I didn't want to read the blurb because I haven't read the first one. I don't have the blurb for the first one because I'm sat here talking to you. So we'll see. And this is why I need to be more selective about the books I bring into my home. One that I did know that was in a series and is the first in a series is Regeneration by Pat Barker. This is the first in the Regeneration trilogy. And this is historical fiction around World War One. I. I don't know any more than that. I don't really want to know any more than that. Pat Bar Barker is a well-respected historical fiction writer. She wrote uh, Silence of the Girls, which I believe was long listed for the Women's Prize a few years back. Uh, so yeah, and there are very, very few books that focus on World War One. Loads that focus on World War Two, but not so many for World War One. So I think this would be um, a good, a good one to pick up, sort of educate myself on the First World War as well as what I know about the Second World War. And then the last one that I picked up from the charity shops <laughs> while us girls were out was Starve Acre by Andrew Michael Hurley. And this follows a family in, I think Starve Acre is the name of like the estate or the house. Uh, and the family that lived there, the, the son dies at the age of five and it's about grief. But I think it goes into sort of gothic horror -y style stuff so yeah I mean that that cover does sort of scream gothic horror so interested to see if this will be any good um I don't know anyone who's read this so if you've read it and it's good let me know if you've read it and you thought it was pants don't let me know because it will sit on my shelves forever more we then also obviously <laughs> went into Waterstones <laughs> and I bought more books. Um, all three of these are translated fiction books. The first of which is Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Diachenko, translated by Julia Matoff Hersey. So I apologize, I'm not sure actually what language this is translated from. I know that these authors are Ukrainian, so I don't know whether it's translated from Ukrainian or Russian. 
but this I believe is a dark academia so with fantastical elements so I think it's about a, a young woman who sort of collects some sort of coins and that gets her into some special school but the school is not what it appears to be I think is a really rough synopsis of this book uh, but I know that Fraser Simons really really rated this book we don't always agree <laughs> but uh, I have a feeling on this sort of book we would be in agreement so and if not then uh, it will give us something to argue about and so the next one I picked up was Lie With Me by Philippe Besson translated from the French by Molly Ringwald and this one follows oh and I also just want to say what I really loved about this was it's signed but it's signed by the author and the translator which I just thought was really cool so this one is about a man who sees someone who looks like their first love and then we flash back to his relationship um in school I think so yeah I've heard that it's heartbreaking and yeah that's that's all I need to know it's, it's a snip of the book but I've read very very few French authors so I'm really keen to try this one I think Charlie picked this one up as well so and after saying I've read very very few French authors I also picked another French book up and that is Heatwave by Victor Justin translated by Sam Taylor and this sounds a bit weird <laughs> so in this we're following a young boy Leonard who witnesses the death of another boy on a campsite where he's on holiday and then it's about the following day which is a really hot day note the uh, note the title and him try not to think about the fact that he saw someone die the night before so yeah intrigued but yeah another french trans translation then for victober i talked about this in my victober tbr but it has now arrived uh, and that is ghostly tales spine chilling stories of the victorian age illustrated by bill bragg and this just looks like an absolute delight so we have in here seven seven short stories including the signal one by charles dickens which alice from alice and the giant bookshelf really really raved about last year the body stature by robert louis stevenson and we've also got uh stories from mr james elizabeth gaskell so arthur conan doyle amelia p edwards and f marion crawford so yeah really looking forward to getting into this there will be a vlog coming on this uh where i review each of the sh short stories that are included so keep your eyes peeled for that one um but oh, what a stunning book this one is absolutely the fault of scott at gunpowder fiction and plot uh yeah he made me buy it because he read the first paragraph <laughs> and that is uh maggie o'farrell's the marriage portrait uh where we are following a young girl called lucrezia in 1561 and she is the duchess of ferrara and she sort of goes off to a remote location with her husband who is a bit erratic and uh she's been protected her whole life and now she is not so yeah I am super keen to try this one. I really loved Hamnet, which I read last year by Maggie O'Farrell. I also think this is a shoe in for the Women's Prize next year. So I'd quite like to have read one that's long listed before the long list comes out. So yeah, I picked it up. And I mean, how beautiful is this book? Oh, I just love it. I just think it's so, so pretty. Yeah, I just can't wait to get to it. Oh, I didn't know it had a tiger on the front. <laughs> stunning so yeah i'm really hoping to get to that before the end of the year and then when i was like stop by books Gemma, i then foolishly foolishly watched jen from jen the librarians video announcing the next three books for her book club <laughs> so if you don't watch jen you really should she's fabulous i absolutely adore watching her videos and she runs a LGBTQ in translation book club with Greg from Supposedly Fun. And they announced their three new books. And I've been meaning to join in with this book club all year and haven't got around to it. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna pick one of these three books and I'm definitely gonna read that in the next three months. Unfortunately, what happened was I listened to the premise for each of them and I wanted all of them. <laughs> 
so I bought all of them. <laughs> so the first of those is La Bastarda by Trifonia Melibia Obon Abono, translated from the Spanish by Lawrence Schimmel. And this takes place in Equatorial New Guinea. So I've never ever read a book set in Equatorial New Guinea before. So that was a big tick. And I think this is sort of a coming of age story. We follow a young girl. She sort of wants to break free from like the confines of her sort of immediate family. And she wants to find her father and she sort of sets out to try and find him, but gets possibly involved in like some gang stuff. Uh, so yeah, it sounded so good. And I couldn't, I couldn't not pick it up. I just couldn't not pick it up. Then we have A Country for Dying by Abadella Dea translated from the French by Emma Ramadan. So I just have to read you, I don't usually read the back, but it's about a cast of characters who are all going through different things and it just sounds so interesting. So you have, so here is Moroccan, a prostitute in love with a man who no longer loves her. So here's friend, Zanuba, formerly Aziz, prepares for gender confirmation surgery and reflects on the recurring trauma of loss, including the loss of her pre-transition male persona. Mujtapa is a gay Iranian revolutionary who finds refuge with Zahira for the month of Ramadan. Alal, Zahira's first love back in Morocco, travels to Paris to find her. And so it's the story of these four people and yeah, how, how this author is going to cover this in um, 135 pages is intriguing to me, but sounds phenomenal. And then we have In the Spider's Room by Muhammad Abdul Nabi, translated from the Arabic by Jonathan Wright. And this takes place in Cairo, Egypt, and we are following a man who is effectively arrested along with 50 other men for being gay. And it's about his time in prison and then what happens after that. And I think he is writing to us from after the events. So yeah, that sounded fantastic. Never read a book translated from Arabic. <laughs> So apologies. Sorry, someone's just waking up from their nap. Say hello. No. Are you gonna wave? Hello everyone. <laughs> so but that was the last book. So quite a few. And as I said, what I'm going to start doing is I am only gonna allow myself to buy one physical book for every two read. And what I will do is at the end of each month I will assess and I will put a little token in my jar. Do you like the jar, Charlie? No. No. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that is what I'm going to do to reduce my physical TBR. I will be doing the same for audiobooks and ebooks. So audiobooks, <coughs> two audiobooks read, I can buy one. And for ebooks, because I have so many, so many ebooks, I need to read three to get one token and then I can spend them whenever I want. Uh, but I just, I want less books coming in than going out. No. Yes. Yes, that was the right way around. So, uh, yeah, if you wanted to see my whole TBR before these and my last haul got added, I'll leave that video here. And thank you very much for watching. Say bye, Charlie. <laughs>